Yeah. Here we go. Welcome to the show, everyone. We are live, he says. Um, I just realized I didn't do the cross posting. So I will have to share this now with you, with you. Yay, cross posting. How is everyone? Where are you guys tuning in from today? As always, I'm fabulously excited to know all of the things. Morning, Amy. That's right, we've got some eyes on the eyes on today. Today's really exciting. We're going to be talking about um, what is probably the most and also conversely the least important aspect of manifestation and how we can do that in flow. I'm very, very excited uh, to share today's lesson. Uh, if you've been enjoying these little episodes that I've been doing every week, why not tell a friend? Have a watch party. Tell some more people. Come and do. Going to be groovy as always. We'll do some teaching. We'll do some visualization to integrate all of that good yumminess and it, so that you can start it using it in your life and then we'll do a q and a hey pam thanks for joining for the first time excited to have you chalette hey how you doing get yeah, really excited about today there's some grooviness i want to share with you so much grooviness by the end of today i want you guys understanding how you can develop a trusting relationship with the universe god source the divine um, manifesting more by doing less and just really being in your groove and in your flow. So that's what we're going to be doing today. As always, I invite you to join uh, my free Facebook group, Dream With Dan. I do groovy cool stuff in there. And uh, I'll be giving away something gifty. We do that every week. Um, just realized that I don't know if the gifty thing I wanted to give you guys today is actually ready. <laughs> so... <laughs> If it's not, I promise I'll be back and give that also, but we'll give you something today. I'd like to give you guys a cheeky prezi. Pam, you are a rock star. Isn't it like one o'clock in the morning for you? Wow. Hey, Linda, thanks for joining us in from Tasmania and welcome to your first uh, first episode of the show. Highly exciting times, highly exciting times. Okay, let's get into it. I'm going to get into it. I'm going to start by sharing sharing a story. A story about a man named Bob. <laughs> you may find that every single one of my stories, the guy is named Bob and the lady's called Sally or Louise. But anyway, we're going to talk about Bob. Bob wanted to order a shoe rack. <laughs> Bob wanted to order a shoe rack from Amazon. Now, this is what Bob did. Bob went on to Amazon dot whatever dot com. He searched for his uh, his shoe rack. He found an appropriate shoe rack, which was fitting and able to hold all of his shoes. And then what Bob did was, is he um, he typed in his delivery information, double checked everything, he then typed in his payment information into amazon.com. And then what Bob did was, is he pressed purchase. He hit the purchase button um, from the delivery options. Bob was told by the good folks of Amazon that uh, that his delivery will be with him by 12 p.m. the next day. This is what Bob did. Immediately, Bob looked for the number for customer services and called to confirm. Hey, I just made an order a few moments ago. I'm just checking. Do you have my correct delivery address? Can we check my delivery address? He checked and everything was okay. An hour later, Bob called up again. Can you tell me the name of who's going to be delivering my package? I'd really like to know who's going to be delivering my package. They told him the name of the delivery driver. Bob then called again and he said, um, what's the number plate and the make and model of the vehicle that's going to be used for Sally to deliver my, my shoe rack tomorrow? They gave him all the information. Bob called back again an hour later. Are you sure that you're definitely going to deliver it? I know I've paid and everything, but are you sure that this isn't some kind of scam? I don't know, you internet companies, it could be a dot-com bubble. At which point, the person on the other side of the line 
uh, said, you know what, Bob, I, I don't think this is this is getting a bit weird now. We're going to have to um, block your account because you've called several times today. This isn't going to work out. So Bob didn't get his delivery. His Amazon account got shut down uh, and he didn't get his shoe rack. No shoe rack. But here's a crazy thing. How many people listening to this story, whether live or on a replay, are like, Bob, you're a bit of a donut. We've got some people calling Bob a donut right now. I think you are. I think, like me, you're looking at Bob and saying, "Bob, you're you're a bit of a you're a bit of a do. You're a bit of a donut." You know, you placed your order, you checked your address, you made the payment. They said it's going to be there by twelve. At least let twelve o'clock come before you're saying anything and calling them every hour to the point that they're blocking you. So we understand through this analogy and the story of Bob that this is a bit of a nonsensical thing to do. But my question is. Why the hell are you doing it every day with the universe? Let's put this in another way. What we would have assumed would happen was that Bob goes on the reputable website of Amazon.com, places in his um, information. He was responsible for putting in his information, so it's going to be delivered to exactly where he says. He ordered the thing. He's going to get exactly what he ordered delivered to exactly where he said it's going to be delivered and he was given a promise by a reputable party that it would be there before 12 o'clock the next day. Now, unless you've been living in a cave or in the jungles of Brazil, you probably know who Amazon.com are. You probably know the website and you probably know that it's got some, uh, it's got some credibility as a, as a legitimate company. And so those of you who are listening to this story are like, Bob's a douche, come on, it's Amazon. But yet, when we apply the same overlay of our relationship to the universe, we are doing the same thing as Bob is. We're looking at the universe and we're saying, hey, are you sure that my abundance is coming to me and it's not going to go to Sally or Bob? We're saying, um, are you sure that you know who I am and the abundance is coming this way? Exactly how is it going to come? How are you going to deliver me? my blessing, how are you going to deliver me, my abundance. I need to know exactly who's delivering it, what way, when, and all of the things. Now, fortunately, the universe is not like Amazon in my story. But what actually happens is we've been exploring in the past weeks, and I know some of you guys are here for the first time, so uh, I'm gonna invite you to go back and check and give a little highlight now. The request that we make of the universe isn't made on an online form. It's made through who and what we are and how we're showing up in our life. Through that medium, we make our order of the universe, we set the delivery instructions or not. Because what happens is when we're in the crazy spin and start being a Bob, calling the universe every five seconds through our doubt, our fear, and our anxiety, we actually change the substance of who and what we are. And by changing the substance of who and what we are, we no longer are resonating at the frequency of request and actually start resonating at the frequency of repulsion. And what I mean by that is we cancel our own order. But the crazy thing is, is that we cancel our own order don't realize that we've canceled our own order and are sitting around sending complaints to customer service for something that we canceled because through whom what we were, we are, and that is doubt, fear, and anxiety, we cut ourselves off from our blessing, our abundance, our relationship, our health, our intention, our goal, our objective. We cut ourselves off from it and deny ourselves that blessing. When are we going to start giving God the universe, source energy, the divine? When are we going to start giving that thing the same respect that we give to Amazon? I want you to sit with that. Because the reason why you are not likely receiving that which you are praying for, intending for, meditating on, setting goals for, is because by virtue of who and what you are, you are not showing up to receive, you're showing up to repel. You are the annoying customer calling up 
asking all of the details, ins and outs, and basically stalking yourself into a restraining order <laughs> of your own creation. We've spoken over the last few weeks about a number of pieces around my my teachings around abundance, and I'll speak a little bit more about me and what, what I talk about. But this last piece of the puzzle, which I've described as the most important thing and the least important thing, has been what for many of us has stood between us and receiving that which we have been praying for, intending on meditating about. Reality wraps around who we are, not what we say we want. What we get results from who and what we are. And this simple mathematical equation of who I am equals what I get is what makes manifestation so bloody straightforward but also so difficult because we're so often caught up in other things that we're not present enough within ourselves to be the version of us that correlates to what we are intending to experience. Now again, over the last few weeks, I have been breaking down some of the underlying stuff behind how we do that. In the weeks to come, I will be sharing with you ways that you can step into more of yourself in relation to what you desire so that you can actually direct the course of your life and manifest more of what you want more love loving relationship better health more money this is what we do over at beyond intention university we have people stepping into a level of mastery that equates to simply going onto a website placing an order and knowing with certainty that it's going to show up but how do we establish a level of flow then in how we're showing up physically that creates a resonance, creates an alignment that allows us to experience that which we're intending to create? Well, it starts with understanding, I think at least, that there is no one size fits all way to have that in our life. There is no one winning formula there is a way to take the truth of what a winning formula looks like and create it for ourselves. Trust, guys, doesn't come out of nowhere. It comes from a relationship being built. I'd like you to think for a moment about any business, friendship or romantic relationship that you've had. It was your experience of the person that gave you the level of trust that you developed with them. Well, many of us have not actually been endeavoring to even do anything to develop a relationship of trust with the universe. We just look at ourselves as not having that trust and then have something to say about it, calling customer service, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm gonna invite you to do today is I'm gonna invite you to start developing a relationship of trust, consciously, actively, developing a relationship of trust because it's only through that that you're going to be able to take your hands off of the keyboard <laughs> put the phone down stop calling customer service and instead just focus on your part in the co-creation experience which is how you are showing up and by establishing yourself as showing up at a frequency making the choices being the person that resonates with what you want to experience you'll get there and again the whole point of these weeks that we're going to be spending together is i'm going to show you how to do that but in order to have any inroads on this journey we have to have a relationship of trust at least in the works now a relationship doesn't start necessarily with completing our trust it's something that builds over time but unless we start the process of building that trust it will never be there it won't be there unless we start the process of building it but how do we start building that relationship of trust well it starts believe it or not with looking at the evidence that's already been presented to you that you can trust the universe what does that look like looking at the fact that regardless of the nature in its smallest detail of your relationship with your reality you're here right now now 
I know that's very cheesy stroke cliche. Though. Be grateful. Start a gratitude journal. But you know, this cliche thing of being grateful for what you've got already is the magic source. It's a magic source that's got a lot of airplay and so isn't maybe getting the respect that it's due. But the magic source that we get from just expressing freaking gratitude for everything that we've got already starts to build neural pathways, those wiring in the brain that allows us to recognize that the universe, that God, that source, the divine is an entity that we can trust because it's one that generally speaking doesn't really let us down. Now, there's an idea, a concept in reality trance surfing uh, called slides. Uh, and when we look at the concept of slides, what we look at is the distorted viewpoint from which we see and experience. So part and parcel of this thing, of developing this trust, is taking off the distorted lenses through which we've been perhaps seeing the past and coming to a place of playful, innocent curiosity, stepping up and looking at our experiences and saying, how can I find something to be grateful for in this? You see, for many of us, we're not actually ready to do the work of actually creating our reality. We like to talk about it. We like to read about it. We like to talk about the latest new thing that we've been doing or go and do a plant medicine journey about it. But actually doing the work of digging in and choosing consciously to show up every day moving towards what we want means that we need to start making some different choices. And one of those choices we need to perhaps consider making differently is how are we viewing our experiences? Are we looking for the good? Or are we caught up looking at the bad? Or the less empowering? Because it's only by us choosing to show up looking for the good that we're going to find it because reality is a crazy thing. It works on our expectation. The more that we're expecting the bad, and looking out for that through our distorted lenses, that's what we're going to see more of. So if we want to see more of the good, it starts with us actually stepping up and looking for more of the good. And here's a crazy thing. The more we look for the good, more, the more we're going to find the good. And as we find, see and look, observe and witness that good, our experience becomes imprinted with that good. And the result is we get more good. And as we have more good, we have more reason to consider ourselves in a trusting relationship. If we're in a romantic relationship and we're always expecting our partner to be doing something funky, we're running around looking for evidence of them doing something funky, the likelihood that we're going to catch them doing something funky, even if through our lens we're reframing something to be funky, is very, very high. Versus me expecting the best. Now, I'm not saying be a silly douche where we're pretending things didn't happen. No, we're talking about an infinitely loving universe that is always looking out for our, our highest good, is always looking out for us, always, always trying to give us the best. But we have to be looking for it in order to witness it because as we spoke about a few weeks ago, the mind doesn't lie to itself or to us. It just goes on the basis of the evidence that we've observed. So when we're focusing our attention and our awareness on the good, that's the input that we're getting. And as we're getting those positive inputs, those inputs of expansion, then what's going to end up happening is, is that we're going to start having thought patterns that match that experience. Thought patterns of fear, doubt and anxiety are not expansive ones. They're not from evidence of expansion and goodness. They're from evidence that we've been witnessing of fear and doubt uh, and, and, and anxiety, that's the seeds. So when we're changing the focus and changing the inputs, we're changing the, the, the source code for what we're experiencing, we end up having a completely different mental experience. And as we have a different mental experience, we're opened up to making new choices and therefore having a different physical experience. And so I said this part of the creation, the manifesting process, is the most and the least important thing at the same time. How is that so? It's the most important thing because for most of you, this action piece is what's been standing between you and what you desire. It's the least important thing because by the time we get to the action, all of the creation's already done. All we're really doing here in action is receiving. 
But if I'm shut off and not trusting, then I'm not allowing myself to receive. I'm canceling my order. Essentially what we need to do is stay out of our own way long enough for the universe, for God, for source, for the divine to give us what we've been praying for, to give us what we've been intending, to give us what we've been coming for, we've been meditating about. Because here's the crazy thing, as the law of polarity says, the second that we had the desire, expressed it and stepped into it, it no longer became a potential, it became a three-dimensional, a physical reality waiting for us to receive it. But the receivership is going to demand of us giving the universe the same bloody respect that we give to Amazon. Knowing that 12 o'clock is going to come and it is going to be there because that certainty facilitates us stepping into receivership. And where does certainty come from? It comes from trust. And where does trust come from? It comes from building that trusting relationship. And how can we start building that trusting relationship? By looking with expectation of finding for evidence to support the fact that we have been dealing with an entity, uh, a source, uh, a divine essence that has always wanted to give, always wanted to support us, always wanted to provide us with evidence to trust it because it has been the trustworthy part of the relationship. Generally, it's us that's been turning our back on. It's us that's been fearing. It's us that's been doubting. It's us that's been the cheater. But if we were to come into, consciously into this loving, conscious relationship, come into it with a space of expectancy, come into it grateful for what's been done already we're leaving the door open for us to receive that gives us more tangible physical evidence which gives us more uplift more boost to go and manifest more because we're setting a new baseline for our experience now so it's the most important because it's a thing we've been probably missing out and the least important because as we've been looking at for the past few weeks by the time we get there everything's already done anyway does that make sense Let's give the universe the same respect that we give to Amazon. Because by doing so, we're going to allow ourselves to receive that which we've been praying for. And that receivership will just create space for more blessings, more goodness, more love, more wholeness, more power in our experience. Because the universe has always been providing for us. But through our distorted lens, we've been putting it in a different framework and putting it in a different patterning. But by us continuing to show up, looking for the good, choosing to commit to this relationship, we open ourselves up to receive more and more and more goodness. Goodness that was there for us the whole time. So I'm going to take you into a visualization now to look at trusting the universe and building a loving relationship with the universe. As always, I'm going to do... Um, a very gentle breath work just to get us out of the parasympathetic nervous system allow us to chill out and relax as always my warning if you are uh, operating machinery or looking after small humans come back and do this later we're at 23 minutes 23 minutes um and i'm going to put in the thing visualization starts here So that you know where to come to. Um, and what I want you to do is I want you to just drop in. We're not trying to force anything. We're not trying to make anything happen. Because as we've been exploring over the past few weeks, everything's already done by the time we get to the point of even making the choice about what we're going to create. It's all already available to us. In the moment, we can also shift, change, pivot and renew our relationship to reality so that we get more of what we want but it does come down to this point of trust and so what we're going to be doing like i said is a short visualization to take us into a space of trust we're going to be going for about 10 to 15 minutes perhaps i'm going to invite you to follow a very gentle pattern of breathing to drop into your heart and by that i just mean bring your awareness to your chest and by that i mean i just focus your attention here that will bring you in I'm going to guide you on a little journey. We're going to step into having some trust, 
and come out on the other side ready to build a new relationship with the universe. So without further ado, please close your eyes. If an eye cover serves you, then go ahead and pop one on. Straighten up the back or lie down, get comfortable, but most importantly, get present, get here and get now. I'm going to invite you to take a nice deep breath in through your nose, filling the stomach, filling the chest. Hold. Hold. Release. Allow your lungs to empty. And just enjoy the sensation of empty lungs for a moment. Now breathe in once more, please. Filling the stomach, filling the chest. Hold. And as you hold here, imagine a beautiful plant or flower and the number three. Breathe out. Three, three, three. Allow your lungs to remain empty and relax for a moment. Pausing and breathing in, through the nose again, filling the stomach, filling the chest. Hold. Keep the plant or flower, the number two. Breathe out, gently and relax. Two, two, two. and allow the lungs to remain empty. Relax. Once more, filling the stomach, filling the chest, breathing in through the nose, filling up now gently. Hold. No numbers now, just the plant or flower. And as we breathe out now, Gently hear the word relax, relax, relax. Allow your breath to find a gentle rhythm now as you. Fall into the flow of the shape and the curve and the rhythm of my words as I. Invite you to allow your body to become an anchor now as we. Release all thoughts of the future and the past. And here and now, gather to enter into a journey of reconnection with our source. And you may hear all my words or you may not, but what's most important is that we're here relaxed at peace and ready to enter into a journey of trust. Building a bridge of relationship to the highest expression of creation and non-creation that we can relate to and regardless of the names and the phrases and the titles that I use, you will make a clear, immediate and powerful cognitive connection to whatever that means to you. Feel it, see it, be it. And as I count from 10 to 1, I invite you to take a level of awareness, focused attention to the top of your head. And with each descending number, you will notice yourself relaxing and going more deeply as you. Allow that awareness, that focused attention to descend from the head, 10, 9, past the forehead, 8, 7, past the nose and mouth, 6, 5, past the chin, 4, throat, 3, top of the chest, 2, coming to the center of the chest now, 1, and relax. 
relax. Gathering your awareness here in the center of your chest, relax and go deeper as we enter into a communion, a connection, a relationship now with the highest expression of creation and non-creation. We may call it God, universe, source, the divine. Any name that feels right for you is okay. What's most optimal here for you will be the name that you hear as I speak to you now. Allow yourself to find your feet planted in sand. Feel it, see it. Notice the sand. Feel it beneath your feet. Hear the sound of the waves. Feel the gentle breeze. Feel it, see it. Present awareness now, center of your chest, focused, relaxed, here, present, you, experiencing. Wow. Feeling good. Dropped in now, present and aware, at peace, relaxed. Empty and full at the same time, ready to experience more yumminess, more abundance, more wholeness. And from the water before you, I invite you to allow a representation of the divine God, universe, source to present itself now and allow a connection. Five, four, three, two, drop in one now. The two of you are sitting on the beach and any form that takes is perfect because this is just an opportunity for you to connect to the truth of an eternal presence that goes beyond our understanding. Focused in the center of your chest, here in your mind's eye, resting on this beach, you and the universe. Feel it, see it, be it. Allow the conversation to progress, the laughter to become all the more raucous. Allow yourself to be so naturally present here in this space that it's almost laughable that you had forgotten how natural it is for you to commune with the universe. Holding this present awareness now, this moment of present experience, I'm gonna call your attention back to the outer state of waking consciousness, back to your three-dimensional physical world where this inner representation is never broken but always here and represented by a oneness between you and the universe. Notice how open and receptive you were to this experience. Notice how natural it feels to be at one with the universe and how much love, trust, certainty and confidence you have in this relationship with the universe, one, waking up now, carrying this with you, two, three, embodying this experience now, four, five, wide awake, in perfect health, feeling better than before, ready to embody all that you've experienced. Okay guys, I'm gonna give you a second to settle back for those of you who are watching this on a replay, it would mean the world to me if you could say replay. Again, if this is something that served you, it would mean the world to me, more of the world to me, if you could share it. would love for more people to be able to step into a trusting relationship with the universe so they can manifest more abundance in their relationships, in their health, and in their moolah monies. So before the visualization, we spent some time talking about this idea of trust. 
and giving the universe the same level of trust that we give to our online stores. I touched on the fact that we can develop that trust by developing a relationship and we just did a visualization there to empower you to start opening up to the present reality of a relationship that was always there. I'm going to invite some space now for questions. I'm going to start looking at the feed for questions. And for those of you who are watching this um, on a replay, I will actually be um, popping back into the feed. I, I do aim to do that and checking up on any questions that you've asked. So do feel free to ask them after the fact and I'll be sure to come back and check them. Um, also be sure to join us same time next week, top of the half hour, half of the hour before. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> So that's 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, which is 4.30 p.m. Pacific Time. And God awful late for you guys over in um, Europe and the UK. But we're a Saturday morning in Australian Eastern Standard Time, I think they call it. So what I want to touch on now is something I actually covered in my uh, the group call for my mastermind yesterday, which is something called the wave of fortune. Uh, I don't want to hammer on about it. I just want to touch on it. And the reason why I want to touch on it is because when we start getting those deliveries, we can sometimes get a little bit obsessed with getting more deliveries. And what can happen is we can lose sight of the experience of making the requests and witnessing the deliveries. We can get so caught up in what the things are that we lose touch with the experience. So it's really just a word of caution that as we start having more success in our manifestations that we don't lose sight of the fact that it's it's the experience that's more important than the, than the stuff, right? The stuff is just a happy byproduct of the experience that we're having. So I want you to, as you go into your world this week, I'm intending that you're going into your world this week, having a different trusting relationship with your universe, changing the, nation, the nature of your relationship with your world and allowing yourself to be open to receiving more. But as you receive more, you don't allow that to be a win that becomes a loss because it starts to change the nature of your relationship to things. We can get so caught up in things that we can lose sight of the fact that it's it's the experience that's more important. I believe that for many people that look down or judge people for manifesting something, they've seen that happen one too many times. You know, the money changes them, they get into a relationship and forget their friends and whatnot. Setting aside judgment of others for a second, I want us to just take some time to focus on ourselves. And to carry this focus into ensuring that we are showing up whole and integrity within ourselves, regardless of all the manifestations, in love and humility, regardless of all the manifestations. There's something beautiful that comes from being able to hold space for ourselves as we manifest more, and to do so without judging others too. So I wanted to leave you with that um, that word of caution. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys for now um, my Universal Laws series. It's dreamwithdan.com forward slash laws. The reason being that when it comes to curating your environment to be able to hold more and receive more of what you're intended in creating, Universal Laws are a great way to doing that. I've mentioned about a couple of them today. Um, the Universal Law series I'm going to give you has got, I think, seven or eight different laws that you can tap and use to create and manifest more goodness in your life. And I'd love to see you guys using that and manifesting more. Um, next week's show, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be offering a live coaching session. So what's going to happen is, is that I'm going to open up a Zoom room. We're going to give you some notice beforehand and we're going to pop it in the description so you can come and join us on Zoom. Uh, and I'm going to offer direct coaching on any challenges that you guys are facing in relation to whatever it is you've been looking to create whether it's um, a relationship whether it's health 
whether it's abundance, which is where I specialize. So next week, it's going to be uh, a Zoom coaching call. We're gonna stream that into the group, into the page here. I'm gonna be doing some interventions. Uh, just for you to, to know, I've made my work available to people who've taken it to become millionaires, who've found the love of their life, who've overcome health conditions. We really take a very simplified version of all of the stuff around manifesting and make it practical and applicable. And I'm going to be offering some time for you guys to come and join me for some live coaching and intervention work next week. Doesn't look like you got any questions this week though. And that's all I really had for you today. So I'm going to let you guys get on with your evening, your day. Join us next week. I'm going to be doing live intervention and we're going to pop the Zoom information here. But you'll be able to come and join us on the Zoom and, uh, and get some live direct intervention and coaching with whatever your challenges are around manifesting a more abundant, joyful, purpose-driven life. As always, you can check out my work on my website, dreamwithdan.com. Um, my Facebook group is dreamwithdan.com forward slash Facebook, where we do a lot of groovy stuff. Um, but next week, we're going to be doing some intervention work and some live coaching and really getting into the nitty gritty of empowering you guys to, to change your experience. And then after that, we're gonna gonna do another run on some other really cool tools. It's an absolute honor to serve you guys through this medium. I'm looking forward to uh, to doing so again in the future, especially with our call next week. Until then, keep dreaming with your eyes open. Remember, you can consciously choose a more abundant, joyful, purpose-driven life. I want to thank Mike, Kerry, Linda, Pam, Shalette, and Amy who made yourselves known in the comments. If you didn't make yourself not known in the comment, I'm sorry that I haven't recognized you. Catch us next week. Really excited about that. Until next time, remember to, um, to stay in the heart with your creations. Allow this experience of you developing mastery to become one that enhances you, not one that makes you into a butthole. And we'll talk more about that in weeks to come. Bye for now.